Arrays. In Swift, arrays are ordered collections that store multiple values of the same type. They maintain the order of insertion and can contain duplicate values. Let's go through how to create and manipulate arrays with some examples. The code snippet demonstrates basic array operations. Firstly, it initializes an array called numbers with integers. Next, append adds a number to the end. The third line accesses an element with subscripting, where value will be three. Insert adds a number at the specified index. Finally, remove a removes an element at index four. Dictionaries. In Swift, a dictionary is a collection type that stores associations between keys of the same type and values of the same type in an unordered collection. Each value is associated with a unique key, which acts as an identifier for that value within the dictionary. In this code snippet, we define a variable countries and codes as a dictionary where both keys and values are of string type. The dictionary is initialized with three key value pairs associating countries with their respective country codes. We then add a new key value pair, Germany, DE, to the dictionary. Finally, we retrieve the country code for India using its key, which is stored in the variable country code. Dictionaries in Swift use a syntax of square brackets to define the types of their keys and values and to access the values by their keys. Sets. In Swift, a set represents an unordered collection of unique elements, which means it can contain each value only once. It is particularly useful when you need to ensure that an item doesn't appear more than once in the collection. Sets in Swift are similar to arrays, but with the uniqueness constraint and without a defined order. The code snippet demonstrates how to initialize a set with a collection of strings. We declare fruits as a set that holds elements of type string. We initialize it with three items. Then we insert a new item, durian, to the set. We remove banana from the set, illustrating how to remove elements. Lastly, we check whether the set contains apple using contains method, which returns a boolean indicating the presence or absence of the item. Tuples. Tuples in Swift are a lightweight data structure that allows you to store multiple values of any type in a single compound value. Each element of a tuple can be of a different type, and you can access them by position or by naming them. The given code defines a tuple named HTP status with two components, an int for the status code and a string for the description. The elements are accessed in two ways, by destructuring the tuple into separate constants code and message and by using the names given to the tuple's elements, such as HTP status .status code, The print statements then output the values of these components. Enumerations. Enumerations, often shortened to enums, in Swift are a type that groups related values and enables you to work with those values in a type-safe way. This can improve the readability and maintainability of your code. Enums in Swift are first-class types, which means they can have methods and conform to protocols. In this code, we declare an enumeration named compass point to represent the four main compass points. Enums are defined using the enum keyword followed by the type name. Inside the braces, we list all the possible cases, values that this enum can represent. Here, north, south, east, and west are member values, also called enum cases. Once the enumeration is defined, we can create an instance of compass point in this case, direction to head, and assign it one of the possible values, compass point dot west. This ensures that direction to head can only contain a valid compass point as specified in the enum, avoiding unexpected values. Structs. In Swift, structs, short for structures, are a fundamental construct used to create custom data types. They allow you to encapsulate related properties and behaviors and a value types meaning that each instance copies its data when assigned to a new variable or passed to a function. In the provided code, we define a struct called person with two stored properties, name of type string and age of type int. Additionally, there's a method greet that prints a greeting message. We create an instance named person1 and call its greet method. Then we copy person1 to person2 and change person2's name. Due to structs being value types, Changing person 2's name doesn't affect person 1's name, illustrating the copy-on-write behavior. 
Classes. In Swift, classes are one of the fundamental building blocks. They are reference types that can encapsulate data and behaviors in a single construct. Classes support inheritance, allowing one class to inherit the characteristics of another and extension and can have properties and methods, including initializers. The code defines a base class vehicle with a property current speed and a computed property description that returns a string describing the vehicle's speed. It also includes a method make noise. The bicycle class inherits from vehicle, adding an additional property has basket. An instance of bicycle is created with has basket set to true and current speed set to 15.0. The description is printed, demonstrating inheritance and how instances of classes are used. Properties and methods. Stored properties are provided by classes and structures and are used to store constant and variable values as part of an instance. In this code, person is a structure that has two variable stored properties, first name and last name, that can be changed after an instance is created, and one constant stored property, birth year, which cannot be changed after the instance is initialized. Optionals. Optionals in Swift are used to handle the absence of a value. An optional says either there is a value and it equals x, or there isn't a value at all. Swift optionals are typed, which means you know what type of value an optional can contain, or it might contain nil, indicating the lack of any value. In this code, we declare a variable name of type string, which indicates it is an optional string. Initially, it is set to nil to represent no value. The if let syntax attempts to unwrap the optional, and if it contains a value, it executes the first block where unwrapped name will be the non-optional value. If name is nil, the else block is executed instead, printing no name provided. Typecasting. Typecasting in Swift is used for checking the type of an instance, or to treat that instance as a different superclass or subclass from somewhere within its own class hierarchy. Swift uses the is and as operators for typecasting. This code defines a base class animal and two subclasses dog and cat. An array of animal instances is created, containing instances of dog and cat. Iterating through the pets array, each pet is checked using the is operator to see whether the instance is of type dog or cat. Corresponding messages are printed based on the pet's type. The is operator is used to check the type without actually casting the instance. Class versus struct. In Swift, both classes and structures are building blocks to define new types, but they have some fundamental differences. A class is a reference type, which means when you assign it to a variable or constant, or pass it to a function, you're actually passing a reference to it. On the other hand, a struct is a value type, and it is copied when it's assigned to a variable or constant, or when it's passed to a function. Classes have additional features such as inheritance, deinitializers, and reference counting, allowing more than one reference to a class instance. In the provided code, we define a class dog and a struct cat, both with a property name. When we create a dog instance Rover and assign it to Fido, they both refer to the same instance, which is why changing the name of Fido to Fido also changes the name of Rover. This demonstrates the reference type behavior of classes. Contrastingly, when we create a cat instance Whiskers and assign it to Felix, modifying Felix's name to Felix does not affect Whiskers. It remains Whiskers, illustrating the value type behavior of structs. Initialization and deinitialization. Swift requires all properties of a class or struct to have a value by the time an instance of that class or struct is created. Initializers are special methods used to prepare an instance of a class or struct for use. In the above code, we define a car class with three properties, make, model, and year. We declare an initializer method init that takes three parameters. Inside the initializer, we assign the parameters to the properties using self to distinguish between the parameter names and the property names. When we create an instance of car, we call the initializer method like a function, passing in the required arguments, Honda, Civic, and 2020. Inheritance. In Swift, inheritance is a fundamental concept 
that allows a class to inherit properties, methods, and other characteristics from another class. The class that inherits is called a subclass, and the class from which it inherits is called a superclass. Inheritance promotes reusability and can be used to create a hierarchy of classes. In the provided code, vehicle is a base class with a property current speed and a method make noise. The classes bicycle and car inherit from vehicle, making them subclasses. They each add properties specific to them. Bicycle has has basket and car has number of doors. When instances of bicycle and car are created, they can access the inherited current speed property and make noise method from vehicle in addition to their own properties. Method overriding. In object-oriented programming, method overriding allows a subclass to provide a specific implementation of a method that is already defined in its superclass. This enables polymorphism, where a subclass can customize or entirely replace the behavior of a method defined in the superclass. In this example, the vehicle class has a method start. The car class inherits from vehicle and overrides the start method. When mycar.start is called, it uses the start method defined in the car class, which prints starting the car. This demonstrates method overriding, where car changes the behavior of the start method for any car instances. Access control. Access control restricts the access to parts of your code from code in other source files and modules. Swift provides several different access levels, open, public, internal, file private, and private. By default, most entities in Swift are internal, which means they can be accessed anywhere within the same module app. In the code example, the person class has a private property name that cannot be accessed from outside the class. The age property is accessible within the same module as it's not explicitly marked with an access control keyword. The getDetails method is marked as internal, so it can be accessed within the same module. A private method, calculate something private, is used for internal calculations and cannot be accessed from outside the class. The initializer is public by default as it does not have an explicit access level modifier, so it can initialize person objects from anywhere within the same module. Polymorphism. Polymorphism in Swift allows objects of different classes to be treated as objects of a common superclass. It's a way by which a function can process objects differently depending on their class or data type. Here's an example with a superclass called shape and two subclasses called rectangle and circle. In the code, the shape class provides a draw method which subclasses rectangle and circle override to provide their specific drawing actions. When iterating over a collection of shape objects, the actual method that gets called is determined by the runtime type of the object, not the compile time type. Therefore, shape.draw dynamically dispatches to the correct draw method, demonstrating polymorphism where one method call can result in different behaviors. Protocols. In Swift, a protocol is a blueprint of methods, properties, and other requirements that suit a particular task or piece of functionality. Protocols can be adopted by classes, structures, and enumerations to provide an actual implementation of these requirements. Think of protocols as a list of rules that explain the blueprint of functionality that the adopting types must follow. In this example, we declare a protocol called identifiable that requires a conforming type to have an ID property of type string that is readable, indicated by get. The structure user conforms to the identifiable protocol by implementing the required ID property. Then, we define a function displayID, which takes any identifiable object and prints its ID property. This demonstrates how protocols ensure a certain set of features are available in the conforming types, allowing them to be treated in a generic way. Extensions. Extensions in Swift allow you to add new functionality to an existing class, structure, enumeration, or protocol type. This includes the ability to extend types for which you don't have access to the original source code, known as retroactive modeling. Extensions can add computed instance properties and computed type properties, define instance methods and type methods, provide new initializers, define subscripts, and enable types to conform to a protocol. In this example, 
an extension is being used to add a computed property to the double type. The KM computed property returns the value in meters, assuming the original double value represents kilometers. This is a simple but powerful way to extend the functionality of existing types to suit your specific needs without subclassing or altering the original type. Generics. Generics enable you to write flexible, reusable functions and types that can work with any type while still preserving the safety of type checks. The function swap two values is generic and swaps two values of any type. The placeholder type T is a stand-in for any type. The in-out keyword indicates that the values of A and B will be modified inside the function. By using T, Swift can infer the type based on what is passed to the function, ensuring type safety without the need for multiple functions for different types. Memory management and arc. In Swift, memory management is primarily handled through automatic reference counting, arc C. Arc tracks and manages the app's use of memory by automatically freeing up memory used by class instances that are no longer needed. When an instance of a class is no longer in use, AR the Swift runtime frees up the memory to make it available for other purposes. In this code, the person class has an initializer and a deinitializer. Three variables, reference one, reference two, and reference three, are initially set to nil and then are all assigned to the same person instance. Arc will not deallocate the person instance until all three strong references are set to nil. Once there are no more strong references, the deinitializer is called, printing out a message indicating the instance is being deinitialized. This demonstrates how Arc helps manage memory by reclaiming it as soon as it is no longer needed. Protocol syntax. Protocols in Swift define a blueprint of methods, properties, and other requirements that suit a particular piece of functionality. They do not provide implementations for these requirements, but rather specify the interface and the required functionalities. Once a protocol is defined, types can conform to it by implementing those requirements. In the given code, we define a simple protocol named identifiable. It requires any conforming type to have a property ID that is both gettable and settable. Additionally, the protocol requires a function display ID, which when implemented, should return a string. Conforming to this protocol means that the type must fulfill these two requirements thus ensuring that it'll have a unique identifier and a way to display it. Protocol properties. In Swift, protocols can define properties that must be implemented by conforming types. These properties are specified with only their name and type, along with an indication of whether they are gettable or settable. In the above code, the identifiable protocol defines a ID property that is only gettable, indicated by get, the user class, which conforms to identifiable, implements the property as a gettable and settable stored property. This is allowed because conforming types can provide more functionality than the protocol requires, but not less. Thus, the protocol ensures that any identifiable object can be uniquely identified by its ID. Protocol methods. Protocols in Swift can define methods that conforming types must implement. This ensures that any type conforming to the protocol will have the required methods with the specified parameters and return type. In this example, the greetable protocol defines a method greet that takes a string, a name, and returns a string, a greeting. The person class conforms to the greetable protocol by implementing the greet tray method as per the protocol's requirements. When the greet method is called on an instance of person, it returns a personalized greeting as a string. Protocol inheritance. In Swift, protocol inheritance allows a protocol to inherit one or more other protocols, combining their requirements. This means that any type that conforms to the inheriting protocol must satisfy the requirements of all inherited protocols. In the provided code, we have two protocols, printable and copyable. The printable protocol requires conforming types to implement a print description method, whereas the copyable protocol requires conforming types to implement a copy method, returning an instance of itself. We then define a third protocol, printable and copyable, which inherits from both printable and copyable, 
aggregating their requirements. Finally, the example class class conforms to printable and copyable by implementing both print description and copy methods, thus fulfilling the contract stipulated by the combined protocol inheritance. Additionally, it includes a required initializer init, which is necessary for the copy method to create a new instance of the class. Protocol conformance. In Swift, protocol conformance refers to the ability of a type to adopt and implement the requirements specified by a protocol. This can include implementing methods and properties that are required by the protocol. The code defines a protocol drawable with a single function requirement draw. Two classes, circle and square, conform to drawable by implementing the draw function. When square.draw is called, the console outputs drawing a square, indicating that the square class has successfully conformed to the drawable protocol, fulfilling its contract. Protocol extensions. In Swift, protocol extensions are a powerful feature that allows you to add methods, computed properties, and other functionalities to protocols. When a type conforms to a protocol with an extension, it gains the implementation provided by the extension. This means that you can define behavior for conforming types without having to write the same implementation code in each of them. In the provided code snippet, we define a protocol called greetable with a single method greet. Then we extend the greetable protocol with a default implementation of greet that prints hello. This means that any type conforming to greetable will have a greet method available, even if that type doesn't provide its own implementation. Person is a struct that conforms to greetable, but doesn't provide its own implementation of greet. Therefore, when we create an instance of person named John and call john.greet, the default implementation provided by the protocol extension is used, resulting in hello being printed. Using protocols as types. Swift allows you to use protocols as types, which means you can use a protocol in many places where other types are allowed, including function parameters, return types, and collection types. This allows you to write flexible and reusable components. The code defines a protocol identifiable with a requirement for a read-only ID property. The function displayID accepts any parameter that conforms to identifiable. User and product structs both conform to identifiable. The display ID function is then called with instances of user and product, demonstrating how protocols can be used as types to allow for code that works with any conforming type. 